today a look under the hood of a Dell laptop, specifically the Dell Precision 5510. You can think of this as the corporate version of a Dell XPS 15, a rather popular gaming oriented laptop. But this one, more corporate um, and rather easy to work on. Now a couple things I'll point out. Uh, I'll point out the tools in a moment, what I'm using. But here's a two terabyte drive I use. Here's a pluggable connector for it. And what that lets me do with a little tiny blinking LED light is uh, get myself to USB-C. All right. Now why would you want to do that? Well, you do need to go into BIOS and set it up appropriately, but this is a really good use of USB-C in that you can boot this laptop from this external drive at full speeds, which is a rather nice thing to be able to do. So I'll just point out that for temporary use, which is what I needed, um, that was a great way to get going with full speeds. And I did need to go into BIOS and say, hey, you need to be able to boot from external devices. But um, today's video is not so much about that or similar USB 3.0 connectors or uh, docks, which are way slower. Or Windows to go functionality, which basically is automatic if you have Windows 10 on a drive and you try to boot an externally device like this, it'll let you boot from it. But on one of the backup products like Veeam Endpoint Backup or now called Veeam Agent for Windows, uh, it won't let that work because Windows to go is like, uh, well, it thinks of it as a USB device, even if it's all the way up to USB 3.1 speeds. So today what I want to do is refit this corporate machine, which has a full length battery and put a shorter battery in there that will give me room to put this hard drive inside the system. All right. Now, what tools are needed? Well, I have an iFixit kit, a little older model, uh, but all you need to know is that for bits, I'm going to be using a, let's see what we got here, JIS01 is one part. And the only other tool I need, the only other bit I need is T-5, okay? Let's get started with a little time lapse. Uh, but before I jump into time lapse, I need to show you that first you're going to need Phillips. You're going to need to open this flap. And you're going to want to take out those two screws first. and set them aside. Okay, the rest we can time lapse speed up and it's just these screws around the perimeter that use the uh, uh, T-5. Um, so, here we go. Time for time lapse. Time lapse sequence done. All screws removed and set aside in a little pile. They're all the same length. And we just reach under here, should release, there we go. Quick look at the innards here. You've got a sticky piece here. You've got some louvered vent openings there, some foam. Lots of bits and, pe bits and pieces. Now I'm gonna set that aside and show you around the insides of the system. Now, because of the screws around the battery. I want to orient so the battery is nice and close to me and just point out that before we get started uh, it's really a awesome idea to go ahead and take that edge connector, lift it from the battery and give it just a little bit, actually I can just use fingernails, there we go, just pop that battery connector right off. So we've de-energized, well other than lithium battery, we've de-energized de the motherboard from this large battery pack. So remember I said I'd love to fit the 2.5 inch drive in there? Well, you're going to see where it goes once I pull this big battery out of there. So, time to cut over to Phillips head and remove the screws around the perimeter of the battery. Next time lapse. Here we go. Okay, done removing those seven screws for the battery and 10 screws are what got the lid off, plus two that were under a little flap making it 12. Those two that were longer that I started this video with go right through these 
posts on the battery into the motherboard, main board. All right, so the battery's gonna lift straight up. Nothing holding it in place. And I'll just point out that that is the Dell 84 watt hour battery that was in there. I don't know if focus is uh, doing its thing. Let's move along. Hopefully autofocus worked. Okay, now I've got a part here from Parts People. And I'm going to go ahead and open that up. I've set the packing slip aside to really just show you the battery. So, very carefully packed. I'm going to need to uh, get some scissors just to get into this. But uh, yeah, so they've done a good job taking care to make sure it made its way to me safely. Now, uh, where's an opening? There we go. Dell original battery, 56, instead of the original 84. Three Dell instead of the original, I think it was five. So we basically are holding now a Dell XPS 15 battery, uh, which means the consumer machine comes with a smaller battery than the corporate machine. So having a look here at the apples to apples uh, alignment here, you'll see we've shaved off this whole section where my SSD, my two, two terabyte SSD is gonna go. So by putting in a smaller battery, we freed up a large amount of real estate. So I'm gonna have some screws left over. Time for a little time lapse of putting the battery in place. But basically, don't care what's under here, do care what's gonna be going in there. So we just place this over it. Screws all line up. And ready for time lapse and uh, setting it in there with the screws. Okay, I'll just point out that there was only one, two, three, four screws to do. These two you don't do, right? That comes later when you put the motherboard back together. All right, the next kit to show you is this part. I'm going to have to uh, link in the video to an article. XASW644. Um, what this is is a kit. So we've got two parts in here. This one I did open off camera, admittedly. That's going to be my SATA connector. And what else do we have in here? Basically, we're making this uh, corporate machine into a Dell XPS 15 with a 2.5 inch drive in there, right? Rather than just the one terabyte Toshiba that my machine came with. So we've got some uh, rubber edging for the 2.5 inch drive. And... A bracket for the 2.5 inch drive. Alright, so fastening that in and screws, that's going to have to uh, wait for me to kind of wing that on camera. Alright, um, yeah, not sure about the screws, but so again, one terabyte Toshiba NVMe there, trying to add a drive here and use an appropriate bracket with a rather bendy piece of metal. Okay, so now I need to figure out how the parts to go together. And uh, let's see. Okay, we've got this bracket, and clearly these metal tabs are going to stand on the motherboard somewhere. All right, that's good. We got pins right here that keep it lined up, and two screw holes. And what do you know? I have three screws left from before. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to come up one screw short, unfortunately. All right. Now the drive itself. Say the connector's here. It would seem the drive goes like this. All right. So we've got the basics of the parts. We know it's got to get assembled like this. And I have not done the rubber yet. So rubber. It's going to slip on either end of the drive, it would seem. So we're not talking about a spinning drive here. And uh, this is not quite a, no, it is a symmetrical part, so it doesn't really matter. Just get it on the edge there. All right, so we're adding 
Whoa, sorry, I hit the camera. Uh, we're adding rubber edges. I'm adding rubber, not we. All right. Put this on there. All right. Place it down on the two pins on the left. Things get a little tight. A bit of friction there, which is expected. And now it's time to line this thing up. So I'm looking at where the SATA connector goes seeing that it's basically going to line up straight over the top got a little thumb tab you probably can't see a whole lot on the camera but basically i want to go nice and easy on that let me worry about that after i get the drive screwed down all right so rubber is really kind of in the way um, All right, there's a metal bar above and below. Now you can see it's fitted in nicely. It's gonna go around this battery right there. Um, seems like maybe that was supposed to go in before the battery. I don't know, but that's, that's pretty tight over there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down. So this screw. Start with that one. Beautiful. So a leftover screw that was not used for the shorter battery, but for the longer one, fit beautifully right there. Let's see if we can get this to go down. Same deal here. That SSD is clearly not going anywhere. That was easy. Without damaging or scuffing the battery, you would not want uh, a fire. So I do not feel any damage there. You just want to be careful when you put that metal down. And now I have a choice. I have only one screw and two places to put it. So I'm going to go with the spot that seems to need a screw the most. And that is this spot at the corner. Because it seems to want to lift. I don't want it to lift. So I'm putting the screw there. So the kit would have been nifty if it came with an extra screw, but it didn't. So I'm ending up one screw short. Okay. Uh, Let's see. SATA and power. Let me do SATA first. So line this up squarely. Kind of get a feel for where it's supposed to go down. And then push straight down once it is lined up. Looking from the side, I can see that that's the right height. And very difficult to show you that on camera, but that was easy. Minimal pressure, it's in, I'm convinced it's in, it's a nice solid fit. Okay, short little stubby SATA cable goes between the battery and the drive enclosure. Looks like we're good there too. Next, plugging in the battery connector, very easy with fingernails, and then make sure the cable is laying flush. Okay, that's it. If you were upgrading RAM, I've got 32 gig already, but if you were upgrading RAM now would be the time to do it before closing it up again. So that's it. Got my 2.5 inch bay and a one. So I have three terabytes total. This is awesome. Time to close it up. I'll do a time lapse. That's it. The upgrade of this Dell Precision 5510 into something more like an XPS 15 with two solid state drives inside is now complete. And if I go ahead and boot it up, basically all I'm doing now is just setting the BIOS boot order. Uh, but the machine is obviously just fine. Got the Dell logo splash screen, uh, power staying illuminated. That's a wrap for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. Thanks for watching. And thanks for visiting tinkertry.com.